In this video, we're going to take a look at the Hacky Christmas Challenge that I created for Nahamcon 2025, the Winter Edition. The description says, Crypto Claws is trapped inside walls of ice. If you don't get him out soon and take care of those 1 million gingerbread bombers, Christmas will be cancelled. And there are two zip files you can download, a Windows or a Linux one. I'm going to be using the Windows one, and yeah, you extract it, you'll find that there's a Unity game inside. And if you've ever done any game hacking challenges before, sometimes when you've got a Unity game, you can just open like this monoassembly.dll in dnspy or ilspy, and then like actually decompile all the code, patch it, reverse it very easily. But in this case, I actually compiled it with il2cpp, which makes it harder to reverse. And that was intentional so that you have to go with the dynamic approach. Or you don't have to, but it's the easier solution. Anyway, let's jump into it. I will show you the game first of all. The tree's plugged in, but the lights won't blink. My code is buggy, I need to think. Santa's stuck in the root again. Four or four rain I found my friend. It's a hacky Christmas. Why is all a mess? It's a bug in the season. Holiday stress. It's a hacky Christmas. Bites in the snow. Control all Okay, so we're clearly stuck inside of this box. We can't get any points, so we're not going to be able to get up to 1 million points, obviously. And yeah, the gingerbread men can't get inside of the box. So, I have got Cheat Engine here. I've downloaded and installed this. You want to just make sure, whenever you install it, like, tick the skip option. Otherwise, it'll install loads of adware, and, like, people always complain about that. But, yeah, I mean, as, like, hackers, you should be able to install some programs without getting adware. All right, once it's installed, you have the option up here to attach to a process, and you want to attach to the Hacky Christmas, obviously. And the first thing we're going to do is try and identify what our coordinates are. So because it's a 2D game, we've got a X coordinate and a Y coordinate. That's going to be our horizontal and our vertical axis. It doesn't matter which one you go for. I'm going to go for the horizontal axis here, and we don't know what the starting value is. We can basically assume that whenever we go from left to right, it will increase, or if we go from down to up it'll increase, the y will increase, and vice versa. So that's the assumption I'm going to go on. And we also generally will know that the value type's often a float for this. So these coordinates will often be a float. I'm going to select float as the value type. I'm going to select unknown initial value as the scan type because we don't know what the value is yet, right? And I'm actually going to go over here. Let me... I'm going to start here on the left. And we're going to do our first scan. And the problem is, whenever we do this, actually, let me move this over so you can, we can zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, all right. So the problem is here that we've got 85.7 million values, 80, 85 million floats, because we were so unspecific. And now what we want to basically say is, all right, we found 85 million floats. Well, what happens if I now move to the right a little bit and go back and say, now I'm looking for a float that started off at an un unknown value, but now the value's increased because I just moved to the right. So I go next, and now we've got 3 million. And I can just repeat that again, move to the right again, and then go next scan because it's increased again, right? Same thing again, next. And we've already got it down to 15,000. And if I want to move backwards, I can go and set that to decrease, go back, and then next. And there we go, we're filtering this down. and. Another thing we could do is we could just not move. So like another option here is unchanged value. And you can actually select this to repeat. So now if I just do next scan, there we go. So it's going to filter out any values. And you can even go back to the game because we're not interested in the Y coordinates. Let me move up and down. All right, because we don't want those. And then let's go back to Cheat Engine. Let's stop this from running and see that we've now got 41. So that's awesome. Let's select all of these and move them to the address table down here. And then the next thing I'm going to do is just move around and see how these values react. Some of them are going to clearly move. You see some of those are clearly moving like from left to right. Okay, so those ones look interesting to me. And maybe we select one, call it X. And I'll do this by description. So what if I now tick X and then try to move? I can still move, right? So that wasn't it. That wasn't the one we were looking for. So we could delete that one now because we know it's not interesting. Another way to do this, if you've still got quite a lot here, 
the, the reason I didn't do like thousands, by the way, is if we freeze some of these values and they're like important to the game, it might just crash the game and then we've got to do the whole thing over again. Anyway, one thing we can do is like highlight half of these and then pause it. Uh, not pause it, like set active. So these are like now paused values. So if we try to move, notice we can't move. That means that one of these is actually the X value. And now we can basically, we could get rid of the other ones, right? The ones that were above it and keep filtering down that way. I can't remember which ones were above it now. Let me actually just try the ones above as well. Tick those. Yeah, see that? They're all ticked and they, they don't do anything. So I'm going to untick them and I'm going to delete them. Now we know it's these bottom ones. And I'm actually going to filter this by value because you can see that some of these are the same, right? So like, what if I take this one and let's freeze it. Okay, that one does nothing. Let's freeze this one. All right, that one works. So what if I change that and say, change it to like five. There we go, we're outside. And we can now move around. Now, that doesn't always work because I did try this when testing and actually it let me out, but as soon as I tried to move, it just reset me back to the center. And then I froze it and tried moving around and tried to like score points and stuff and it just wasn't working. So in that case, I actually had to select like all of these and change them all to five. But I guess we just got lucky there and selected the right value straight away. But there we go. That's it. We're out of the box. Now we can go and get points. But I'm not going to do that because I know we need to get a million points. So we're basically going to repeat the same process again. We're going to go to new scan. This time, instead of a float, we're going to do four bytes. And we're going to look for a zero, right? Because zero is the current score. So let me, uh, let me move this a bit. All right, so zero is the current score. I'm going to search for zero, first scan, and we find 60 million zeros. So that's no good. What we want to do is go and get a point. There we go, we've got one. And now we say, out of all those 60 million zeros, how many of them are now one? Okay, 10,000. Let's do the same thing again. All right, so now we're at a two. Next scan, we've got 46. That's pretty good, but we can keep filtering it down. We could also be doing the unchanged thing as well. Okay, this is kind of annoying because it's... All right, here we go, here we go. So that's the three. And we've got one. All right, so this is the only value that it could possibly be. So I'm going to add it to the list down here, and I'm going to change it to one million. All right, you'll see nothing actually happens because we need to go and get another point. So, all right, here we go. And there we go. So now you see the score is updated to over a million and we've now got our flags. We just need to type that in. So yeah, just some memory manipulation. Whenever this game is loaded in memory, we're able to find things like the player coordinates, like the points or the health or the damage, things like that, and then just modify them. If you're interested in this, I made a cheat engine series for Integrity with like 10 videos before, which goes through a lot more than this. Like it goes through code injection and some like really cool things compared to just memory manipulation. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this challenge. It took me a little while to make. I mostly just like I made all of these images, obviously with AI and a little bit of Photoshop and like some animations in the Unity game editor and stuff, which isn't easy to be honest it's got a lot easier now that you don't have to do everything with uh, photoshop but yeah it still takes a little bit of time anyway hope you enjoyed it and happy christmas everybody